Okay, so in today's video, what I want to do is I want to talk about the driver. It's the club that you guys all want to get better with. And we know statistically, if you can hit this thing, obviously a little bit straighter, but also find some sneaky bit more distance, it's going to lower your handicap significantly. And a student of mine recently came to visit for a lesson. And like a lot of golfers was hitting short irons, mid irons, even longer irons. Uh, well, but when it came to the driver, it was just noticing no more distance, just ended up sort of trying to hit it harder and the ball wasn't going any further. So what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to sort of talk about what I'm seeing and what I see on a daily basis with students that I work with online and also people that come through that door for lessons. And so that you guys can go away and work on it, understand it a lot better and start to improve the driver. So first of all, let's talk about the problem in terms of what's happening. And um, I think it really originates in, in the backswing position which lends itself to a, should we say, inability to sequence the downswing correctly. So what I'm always looking for with, with students is I'm looking for them to, to, to understand how to use the ground. Um, and the way you want to use the ground is try and keep your trail leg flexed. Uh, and what should happen in the backswing is that your pelvis should turn into your leg, right? So the pelvis should move for a right-handed golfer slightly towards your right-hand side so it can turn into the leg. Now, some of you might be a bit concerned about sliding, but that's why I said this has to create a resistance because if this is weak, then that will slide. If this is pushing down, then you'll turn into the leg. Now, the big difference as well, for some of you that might be uncertain, turning into the leg is like so. So that's me turning the pelvis into the leg. And what this does, if I sort of draw a line in the back of my hips, this gives me the ability to retain hip depth. If I turn over the leg, see the way I lose my hip depth. And again, from this perspective, that's turning more over the leg. Now, if you play around with this at home, keeping this trail leg flex and feel like you're just moving a little bit more in a sort of sliding fashion in terms of the early backswing and then turning up to the top, what you'll start to notice is a, is a much stronger interaction with the ground. And then therefore you should start to notice a much stronger activation in the trail glute. And that's a big thing. And what I'm sort of saying is, what was happening with Lynn is as she was swinging back, she wasn't really using the ground all that well. And then that meant as she started the downswing, she sort of had to fire everything forward to try and generate energy. And that was just getting the angles all wrong. So what we did first of all, is we spent a little bit of time just getting used to the concept of turning the pelvis into the leg, which then gives her a platform to start the downswing. So that's your first thing that you need to be working on. Once you've worked on that then, you need to understand how to start the downswing correctly. And what we are looking to do as we initiate the start of the downswing is we want to work on the feeling of pulling the left side back. What you don't want to do is you don't want to fire your right side forward. Because what happens if you fire your right side forward, see my right hip and my right shoulder come forward, and this just gets the club coming down way too steep. And what also happens is you don't generate enough of an angle in terms of width. So if I do this, see my hands come down very narrow, there's no speed. If I move my left hip back, much more width, much more speed to deliver on the back of the golf ball. And similar to the exercise that you can see here, this is a good one. Just practice against the wall at home. Get yourself a couple of fingertips distance away. Hands across shoulders, turn back so your trail hip goes onto the wall. And then what you're looking to do is pull the lead side back as you move your weight to the left side, like so. And what this does is this just gives you the correct sort of initiation of pulling the left side back, not moving this way. This kicks the hip forward. This is the wrong motion. This is the correct type of motion here in terms of pulling that left side back. Now, what happens if I sort of now put my hands together to demonstrate a backswing? If I spin, which means my right hip moves this way, see my head, it starts to look more at the front of the golf ball. If I pull my lead side back, see my head now stays this way. So my head, it's not so much a consciousness, it's when we spin, everything moves this way, so the head goes in front. When we pull the lead side back and you just concentrate looking at the back of the ball, that's what we're looking for. And that's what I've tried to really sort of highlight in terms of how your head makes a big difference with your driver, as I highlighted there in the thumbnail. So it's a case of this way, pulling the lead side back. See my hands now, I've got loads of width to whip through, as opposed to coming this way, they're gonna come around really steep and narrow. So similar to what I said to Lynn and similar to what I'd say to you guys, the way that you get out of these bad habits is you need to go through a stage of conscious competence first. 
So that would mean doing some of the drills at home, things that I've highlighted in this video and doing them correctly. Once you can do those correctly and you can get a feel for it, then you can start to play around with it a little bit down the driving range. I like to get, as again I did with Lynn, I like to kind of break it into three stages. So you've kind of got the backswing, it gives you a chance to feel it, transition, so you get that feeling of pulling that lead side back with that head position, so not this way, this way, yeah, not here, here, and then, you know, you can swing your arms through and just sort of go from there. And that's again the journey that I'm trying to paint with Lynn. It's a case of back, create that load, understand how to transition correctly, and then to allow those arms to fly as you turn through that golf ball. And if you transition correctly, you'll find a huge amount of resistance. If you go this way, it'll be weak and you'll be leaking loads of distance. So hopefully this video helps. It's a little bit more detailed, but I truly think this is exactly what you need to do. And if you can pivot correctly, particularly with this sort of lower body area, your, the rest of the body will align itself towards the pelvis and how it moves. It'll work for you, I promise. It works for all the students that I get the chance to work with. I'll see you guys again really soon.